Hello, everybody. I'm Greg, and today I'm here at my little farm in South Central Wisconsin, where I like to explore wildlife and their behaviors using digital trail cameras. This time I want to talk a little bit about the use of animal repellents. So whether you're trying to maintain a garden or keep your chicken coop safe from raccoons, or even just keep skunks out of your yard, there's a lot of times when both city people and country alike find themselves at odds with the local wildlife. And rather than killing these animals, a lot of people today turn to repellents. These are non-lethal methods, usually involving flashing lights or noises or commonly scents that supposedly keep animals away from your target area. And the internet's full of websites promoting various products for these purposes. So as someone who works in turtle conservation as an advocation, my particular interest in this lies in the possibility of using some kind of scent that will keep predators out of turtle nesting areas. So even though I have this particular interest in keeping skunks away, a lot of what we might find here might be useful for you too for whatever purposes you need a repellent for. So the method I'm going to use here to test this is simply to apply some of this peppermint oil onto cotton balls and place them into well perforated jars. This is a common method that's suggested for applying these things in the field. So here we are out in the field where we're going to test these materials. So I've got two testing sets here. One is simply with tap water and one with the peppermint oil. So we have those well perforated jars with two cotton balls each and a total of 10 milliliters of liquids in each one, which is about two teaspoons. On top of each jar, I've also got a marshmallow that's been treated with two drops of either the water or the peppermint oil, and then another marshmallow alongside that's not treated at all. Near them also is some dried cat food, which I found a lot of these animals really seem to like out here as an extra enticement. And then around each I put a, a little ring of their respective materials, either the peppermint oil in a ring or the water in a ring, about the same amounts. So we'll see what happens.
So when these tests I presented prepping oil to wildlife in a commonly recommended way, cotton balls within well perforated jars. I've also increased this olfactory signal by adding a small amount to a marshmallow directly on top of each jar, as well as made a little drip line around each of the sets. That amounts to about 15 milliliters of oil at each trial, about three liquid teaspoons, and produces a smell certainly detectable by the mammals on this site, all of which have senses of smell almost unimaginably clean by human standards. Nonetheless, the camera evidence showed that skunks, raccoons, and rabbits were not deterred from the area in general, or even from the oil placements themselves, and typically returned to the area night after night. In fact, both skunks and raccoons often manipulated the perpon oil lace baits sitting on top of the jars, and raccoons were seen to actually eat them. These mammals were also found just as likely to visit the oil-treated set as the nearby control where plain water was used instead. As expected, birds, largely visually oriented, without much of a sense of smell, were also not repelled from the area and typically showed up within a few minutes of each trial. My intent here is not necessarily to contest the commercial claims made by the promoters of these products or to argue against anything your friends or relatives may have said about their own experiences. It's important to consider that these tests were carried out for just a couple of weeks at one location using a particular set of methods and on the wildlife that just happened to be present. Maybe spraying the stuff with a misting bottle over a wider area would have given different results, although the costs involved using so much more material would have increased substantially. That would also be impractical over large areas and could have ecological impacts that would have to be taken into account. It's also quite possible that the oil would have been more effective if used in a confined indoor space, like an attic, for example, as is often claimed in online testimonials. But again, my main interest here was to see how it would behave in a field setting. And what I've seen here doesn't provide much encouragement that the approaches using citrus oil repellents in an open area would be effective in keeping common mammalian predators out of either your garden or on lands targeted for conservation purposes like turtle nesting areas. Thanks for watching.